data from study 24 using pembrolizumab in patients selected for pdl one expression of more than 50 percent demonstrated the superiority of pembrolizumab over chemotherapy for patients with non-small cell lung cancer. This was really a huge change in the standard of care for our patients, allowing us for the first time to use immunotherapy instead of chemotherapy as first-line therapy, and has significantly changed our practice. So for patients which represent about one-third of the group of non-small cell lung cancer with high expression, this would be the recommended therapy. So Keynote 024 was a unique and pivotal phase three trial comparing single agent uh, monotherapy, PD-1 inhibitor, in this case pembrolizumab, to standard platinum uh, combinations. The trial mandated a minimum PDL1 expression of 50% or higher, and this was based on previous phase one and phase two data that showed that this group had response rates in the 45. 50% range with uh, two-year survival rates uh, in treatment-naive individuals uh, approaching 60%. So certainly the, um, the homework was already done. The uh, pre-existing data to justify this trial clearly existed. Uh, the trial uh, was reported by Marty Reck uh, at uh, ESMO in October of 2016 and published simultaneously in the New England Journal of Medicine and it's completely transformed the therapeutic landscape. Those individuals with 50% or higher PDL1 expression, which is roughly a quarter to 30% of all uh, individuals with advanced non small cell, uh, they clearly had a higher response rate, 45% compared to about 28% for the control group, significantly, and I'd argue clinically meaningful, higher progression free survival, 10.3 months versus uh, six months with a hazard ratio of 0.5, and a statistically significant, uh, rather marked survival advantage uh, with a hazard ratio of 0.6. In fact, the median survival has not been uh, seen yet in the uh, uh, experimental group. And those curves, the survival curves, seem to be diverging more and more over time. So to get on that specific trial, to really be eligible for frontline pembrolizumab, A, you need to be treatment naive, good performance status, PS0 uh, to 1, no pre-existing oncogenic driver, so no evidence of EGFR mutation or ALK translocation, no pre-existing autoimmune disease of any sort, and that eliminates folks with collagen and vascular disease, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, et cetera, no pre-existing interstitial lung disease, and most specifically, a minimum PDL one level of 50% or higher. Um, Keynote 1 uh, was a historic trial because it was a phase 1 study, actually we, we participated at Yale, uh, that enrolled patients uh, for lung cancer, actually I think melanoma 2, but in the lung cohort there were hundreds and hundreds of patients. And, um, and now those patients are being followed um, for long periods of time, and at three years, you know, 15 to 20 percent of patients with metastatic lung cancer are still alive. So what that does is it shows us the durability of the therapy. Immunotherapy is special because of its specificity, its adaptability, and its durability. And we're seeing that durability in these updates. So um, again, love to see more patients benefit, but the fact that 15, 20 percent are alive at three years, we're seeing similar things now for nivolumab. Uh, I'm sure we'll see it, uh, of course, epilumumab, you know, in melanoma, similar things we're seeing. This population of patients that lives a long period of time um, we need to, you know, identify them earlier and, and treat them as quickly as possible. I have started using pembrolizumab in my practice upon approval of the agent sometime in the fall of 2016. So far, I have been very lucky, consistent with the data from use of first-line pembrolizumab, progression-free survival of about 10 and a half months. I haven't seen any of my patients progress on this therapy, so the experience has been really good. Toxicities have been tolerable. I haven't seen grade three toxicity. For the majority of the patients, the toxicity are, are, are grade one and grade two, and I can really easily manage them. In terms of differences with second line use of checkpoint inhibitors, I think in the front line, we're seeing a more robust group of patients that can stay on these therapies longer and derive longer-term benefit from this. 
I haven't had a, a huge experience with the use of pembrolizumab in the front line to be able to compare in a robust way between the two settings. My own personal experience with frontline uh, pembrolizumab uh, is rather limited. Uh, the drug was only approved in October 2016, uh, but my experience pretty much parallels what we've observed in the clinical trial. Uh, patients are tolerating this agent quite well. Toxicity is minimal. We see occasional arthralgias, sometimes arthritis, occasionally diarrhea. Uh, individuals are at risk for hypothyroidism, so it's a prerequisite to check TSH levels periodically. I tend to do that pretty much every cycle, but by and large, extraordinarily well tolerated, minimal upper GI toxicity, no hair loss to speak of. Patients feel and look normal. The response rates, uh, in my experience, are essentially matching uh, what was uh, documented in the uh, clinical trial. But again, I only have six months' experience. It's uh, now June of 2017, and the drug was only approved in October. And the first patient I ever treated with this agent was in November of 2016. So I think we have to make a major distinction between first line and second line. Single agent first line is confined to individuals with uh, higher levels of PDL1 expression. So, unsurprisingly, they are much more likely to um, have a response and more durable benefit, prolonged uh, progression free survival, compared to the broader population who are treated in the second line setting, where if we use agents like nivolumab or tezolizumab, uh, uh, the survival benefits been observed irrespective of the PDL1 level. There, the response rates tend to be lower, about 15 to 20 percent, progression free survival, median about three to four months, but still a clear survival advantage compared to uh, uh, our erstwhile standard docetaxel. I've been using a great deal of frontline pembrolizumab. Of course, at Yale, we'll run clinical trials if we have them, but if someone's PDL1 high, I will try to put them on pembrolizumab. And quite frankly, the uh, tolerability is just as good, if not better, than when given second line. Uh, and the efficacy is uh, just as good, if not better. In fact, it's, of course, it's a little bit better because you're selecting patients 50% high. So both in patients that I've treated at Yale myself, or those who come to me for consultation and I've sent home, those are the ones where you can often get a very nice call from a patient. Uh, you know, they're, they're feeling well, um, their tumor is shrinking. We are, I am seeing it in the sh short experience I've had since the approval uh, late last year that the response rate is about 40, 50%.